Welcome back to the channel, you guys. This is your girl, Wicked Raider 22. Man, I had to, I had to really smile because you know, sometimes you get a champion, you are so excited when you see them as they are running through whatever color background they may have. You have imagined this champion, you've heard about them, you want to use them in so many areas. You build them out and then it's like, yeah, no. In this video, guys, we're going to take a look at one champion that I have actually six starred on my account who everyone was so excited and I had heard so many good things about. The reviews look pretty good and you know, you know, you know how reviews can do you. But at the end of the day, it has not been the account changer that I hoped it to be. And many of you have this champion. You probably researched this champion. And mm, so it's going to be a little mini series that rolls champions that I am or I was ecstatic to receive and champions that actually impressed me based on where my account was in the moment. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Every champion can do different things depending on where your account is and depending on where you are in the game. Keep in mind, guys, I am at level 43 on this free to play account. I am what's considered to be a pretty casual player. Um, I may be able to put in maybe an hour or so per day. Sometimes two, depending on how many multi battles I have available. And I'm in different areas of progression, depending on what part of the game we're looking at. Every account I have kind of focuses on a different area. So then I'm able to give you a semi, <laughs> a semi supported idea in the background. So who's this champion? Who is the champion that disappointed me? And we're going to start among the Telerians in the Barbarian section. And on this particular account, she is not highlighted, but <sighs> guys, it is Sky Touch Shaman. When I pull Sky Touch Shaman on my other account, I was so excited. I knew that this was a support champion. And I mean, I was coming in behind having Dur the Hungerer on my account which is still by far one of the best epics I have pulled and most game-changing epics I've had on my account. And so when I pulled Sky Touch Shaman, I had heard about her support ability. Um, I had especially heard about the passive. And I just knew that this particular champion would be a game changer. And that didn't quite work out the way I had hoped. Now, aesthetically, my girl is okay. You know, they did a little something with her. Doesn't have all much, but we'll go with it. You know, she has on more clothes than some people that we know. Look at the reviews. Overall, they seem pretty solid. You know, there are always a few areas in the game where a champion may be weaker than others. Unbothered, excited, yes. And so I go in and I take a look at her kit. Talon knives, oh, got excited again, attacks all enemies, heals by 15% of the damage inflicted if this champion has less than 50% HP. <sighs> the conditionals, but hey, boost the champion's turn meter by 20%. Instead, if the champion has 50% or higher. Eh, okay. We came in with Immortal, removes all debuffs from all allies. And that's been probably the biggest thing that I've liked about this champion so far. Then places a block debuffs blocks debuff buff and a revive on death buff on all allies for two turns this is what sky touch shaman is known for her second skill that you can place on a four turn cooldown this is her bread and butter and i'm thinking to myself okay if my allies can revive on death all right all right not not a problem and she blocks debuffs okay you know we're coming in pretty solid Let's look at this passive. Bloodstained Ritual damages this champion by 10% of their max HP at the start of each turn. Heals all allies except this champion equal to half of the champion's current lost HP. Places a 30% decreased speed debuff on this champion for one turn at the start of each turn. Also has a 50% chance of placing a fear debuff on this champion for one turn. This passive was not my favorite. 
So I paused here because you can increase the heal by 20%, but I went back. Damages this champion by 10%. So she's going to take 10% damage of her max HP. And the problem with this, it really depends on where her HP is standing, if this is worth it or not. It also comes down to the fact of, do you have a reviver on your team in case you want to bring her back so that she's able to go back in and access this second skill? So her passive, sorry, her aura increases ally HP in all battles by 25%. Here's what I found with Sky Touch Shaman. She is a support champion. And being that her skills are going to be, they are attack based, it doesn't feel like it. I have changed her gear a few times. Can I good get can I get good damage from her? Yeah, you know, she's she's okay there. Is she usually worth a slot on my team? And the answer consistently has been no. She is not replaced or the hungerer. She is maybe a smidget above, honestly, apothecary for my account in a lot of ways. And you guys will know as much as people sing the praises of apothecary. And I have him on most of my accounts. He's a good champion. He has not been the most game changing, account changing champion for me. And I've always assumed it's been a gear thing. Now, I've gotten over, even in the shortest of battles, over 100,000, 150,000, you know, units of damage from her when other champions on the same team may have hit 60. So it's not always the issue. But a lot of times in battle, Scott's a shaman for me, she dies. She dies on a regular basis. It's been to the point where Dur the Hungerer has had to revive her so many times. I got tired of her being revived. Okay. So... I didn't necessarily know what to do with that, but even with a champion who has been six star, um, she has also been, she has a blessing now. She's fully ascended. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I just, I just have not been impressed. And I know people that will actually go through and love her to the end. Now, on the flip side, because they say there's always a little bit of light, a little bit of difference for each and every player. If I go to Sacred Order, for example, which I have several of the champions, I can tell you a player or a champion who's actually had a different impact based on the account. And I have her on more than one account. I get way more out of her on one account than the other. So I am a screamer to the top of my lungs that it makes a difference. But guys, I really like Hope. I don't know if it's based on who I surround her with. I don't know. I, I know that on my pay to play account, my gear is a little bit better. I'm able to forge and go deeper in dungeons, for example. But Hope for me has been a pretty solid champion. She is really good as you come to those second and third stages, especially with the early waves of your battles. But once you get to stage two and stage three, hope has really come through for me. Now, review wise, she gets really great reviews across the board. This is a champion that I'm not sure if I've done a guide on her. If I haven't, I will probably do a deep dive on her or even go a little bit deeper after I've gone maybe 10 more levels in my account because her kit it is attack base. She's coming in only attacking one enemy in the beginning. She places block buffs. She comes in again, increases duration of buffs on all allies. And it's this hardened ability that you will hear content creators talk about probably the most. Increasing the duration of a buff as you make it to early mid game is a lifesaver. I have finished so many levels just because you were able to get that extra turn of usage even from your shields holy storm is a nice one it comes in with a nice punch places you can be placed on a three turn cooldown. you can increase the buff debuff chance by 25 percent um you can increase the damage by 10 percent. but this thing smacks it attacks all enemies and so with hope it's She's more well-rounded. Increases ally HP in faction crypts by 31%. Also really helpful. She's helped me with progression. 
And how I'm judging champions currently is what's the immediate impact on my account. And of course, you're going to start looking at where does the progression lead me? What are the champions have you revealed that I require? What are some skills that I am missing? A lot of you guys have kind of come in and, and started great conversations on, you know, where do I put my veil and perfect veil champions? Where can I best use, you know, things like fear or hex? Who are two champions that have good synergy together? And it's kind of what you're looking for. Sometimes you have champions. There are a lot of people that talk about Bellower, for example. Guys, I have Bellower sitting in the vault on two of my accounts because I couldn't figure out exactly what to do with him. And I had champions that kind of did what he did, but he's a rare champion. He's a good one. And when it comes to rare champions, the reason why a lot of them shine, especially early game, is they are much easier to book. And that's just being honest. They're much easier to book. It's much cheaper to, you know, fully go in with gear for them and to re-gear them. It's just so much easier, especially when you have six starred a champion or two already. I currently have hope on one of my accounts where I am up to my sixth or seventh, you know, six star champion. I just acquired her on my other free to play account. And it's because I'm trying to figure out when her impact is felt the most. There are some champions on your team that if you pull them too early, you won't feel the benefit. And sometimes I feel like maybe that's where Sky Touch Shaman hits. Maybe I'm not in the area of the game, or maybe I haven't placed the right champions around her to really figure out, you know, her biggest her, her biggest level of impact, you know, where she can come in and do some work. But there are other champions that I found that have been much much easier to figure that out about. Now, another champion, and I want to say they may be here. Um, this is another one. I wanted Mother Superior. Um, you know, her aesthetic is pretty cool. My girl's looking nice and modified, cute little boots and all. She has pretty solid ratings. As long as you kind of keep her away from certain keeps, you know, my girl does good. But she's another one. I have pulled her on more than one account. I can say she's had more impact on mm, some accounts than others. There are a couple of areas where she needs to be surrounded with a true nuker, of course. Her first skill, she's attacking one enemy. Her second skill, she will heal an ally 30% of her max HP. She comes in with a continuous heal. There are champions that do it better um, other than the 7.5%. She does place a shield, which can be really helpful. When I run, I think it's Roscar at the tower. Um, I will sometimes run these two together. So even the shields and those are lovely. If I'm going deep into a dungeon and I'm really trying to support my nuker and her as a support champion as well, you know, it makes a difference. And the speed with 13% for rare isn't bad. Mother Superior is another one that she has been very much so a champion that I use based on who I can surround her with. So how do you guys decide? How do you rank your champions in your mind? How do you decide if a champion has really been an account changer or if they're just pretty good for short-term progression? How do you know? I would love to hear about champions you guys have pulled recently and kind of get a feel for the impact that they've had on your accounts. Have you had to go in and switch out your clan boss team? Have you gone in and kind of work with your faction crypt teams? A lot of these champions I build only for faction crypt because I've got to have some kind of support. And that can be hard to find. If you're thinking about Faction Crypt in general, and I'm thinking about like um, Dwarfs, for example, it's the one faction I don't keep a lot of champions from. And the problem is, as far as an area in the faction, I need to do a little bit more work. Lizardman is another one. On several of my accounts, it is zero. I don't keep anything currently from that faction. So I've got to do better. And we're going to talk about vaulting champions. I know. 
I know, I know, I know. We're going to definitely do a video on vaulting champions. I've got a couple of things to say on that one, but let me know your thoughts. I love to hear from you guys in the comments. I try to answer each and every one. If you notice something that I can do a little bit better, if you have suggestions on who I could run on a team together, let me know. Like I am wide open for it. And if you stuck around this long, guys, um, if you don't have a clan, hey, feel free to join us. 22WK, we're going to have some slots coming available. So just check back in with us. Getting ready, of course, this week, I'll be bucking up all accounts, getting ready for Clan v. Clan. We had some tough competition during this last um, CBC, and I promise you, we squeezed it out. But guys, we had fallen behind by a couple of thousand points. So we had to go in and really, really push to do some damage. And we came out victorious. So I'm excited. We are two for two right now. So, hey, we're going to go. We're going we're gonna to do it. You know, two and out, two and out. It is so nice to always jump in and kind of help you guys start off your day. We'd love to hear how your gaming is going. And I'll talk to you soon.